cut. Let's talk about the TCP communication process. Now, uh, you got already know the basic fundamentals of TCP, uh, roll of port numbers. Um, now let's see if we can get some of the details of the communication process. So you're going to learn about the TCP three-way handshake when they're establishing and what, how does a session end? Because remember, this one has to be, a, this is a reliable TCP, is reliable, so it's got to make sure I get everything established and I got to tear it apart when it's all done. So that's what we're going to do. So let's take a look at what happens with this application. So when you're establishing a TCP, so TCP connection, the client's sending a TCP request. So I'm, you've got a source port, and that's the one that's randomly generated, destination port. What is that? That destination, based on our table of four, says it's, it's a HTTP. It's, a, it's going out to the internet. Now I got a client over here that's saying, hey, I want to check my email. So the server's got both ports going on, but just keep in mind, you've got both. So the, the client is making a request to send information. Then you say, well, okay, let's see if I can slide this thing all the way here. Is, is now on the receiving side, now i got my destination, i got a source port and a destination port. Remember, the destination ports in these two cases are well-known port numbers. So, like I said, client one is going to a web server, client two is doing a well-known email server. So as you can tell, that's requesting the destination, requesting the port number. Now, the, the requesting source ports you see that source port, that 49152 and the 51152? Those are dynamic port numbers because I'm not going to, there's nothing special. It's going to be a random number in within that range. So it says, hey, I'm going to establish when I create that initial conversation, I want to, I need to have a port to be able to connect. I know which application I want to run, so I know what it's what the port number is going to be because it's a known port number because I'm using uh, going to the internet so I'm going to be a it's going to go port 80 or if it's going to go with email it's going to go port 25 only because it's a no well known port number but my source port I'm nobody basically so I, I, I just need a port number so I can keep this socket pair communication going intact then as you go through this process, you know, the server responds with the, to the client request. She kind of reverses the, the destination sort ports of the initial request. So you just pay attention. What's my sort? What's my destination? Right? On the message coming back, my source port has changed from the well-known port and the destination port is the one of the client one or client two, whichever one we're talking about. And then your source, your source port in the server responds with the original destination port in the initial request. So the server responds to the TCP client using the destination port from the request packet as its source port. So, so it's like once it establishes that that random one, that 49152 or the 51152, those will be flipped back and forth because you want to keep the socket pair intact as you're going through this conversation. So how does this connection, how is it established? Well, it's handling what they call a three-way handshake. And the first step is there is the, the originator wants to send a, a sync package. So I want to send an SYN package. So I'm, make, I'm sending computer B an SYN packet. I'm giving it sequence number. 
I'm telling what's going to be my control character. And then hopefully the SYN packet is received by the you know, computer B. What computer B then says is, hey, I have, a, I'm going to acknowledge the receipt of that SYN packet. And it sends that acknowledgement back. And it pretty much says, hey, I can use, see, start my, my packages at sequence 300. My acknowledgements will be 100. I'll use control by SYN. And here's my acknowledgement. Computer A gets the acknowledgement that B received with a little bit more negotiating information. And then A says, all right, I'll establish the link. Sequence will start at 10. My sequence is 101. Your acknowledgement is 300. So you kind of so even though they're two different PCs, two different knowledge, they can kind of go through. But you see, this is going back three different ways. And I, ask, I send a request. I acknowledge that the request was received, and then I establish the uh, the communication. And this happens for all TCP communications. Now, when the conversation's all done, you pretty much got to back everything out. You got to make a request that, hey, computer A, I'm finished this conversation. So, what do you think happens? A sends my the finished request. B sends back, yep, I'm sending an acknowledgement back that I received your request. After it receives the back, it now sends its finished. So it sends acknowledgement that it received the fin. Then it sends the fin back. The B says, okay, you, you want you made a request to finish. I'm sending acknowledgement. Yep, I've received that request. Now I'll say you, yep, I finished it on my end. And then the, the, the computer A who started this whole thing acknowledges that computer B has finished. So it's going through, so you got a little bit different sequence of information. You request a request to finish, you agree to the finish, you acknowledge it, you acknowledge when you think you've finished it, and then send back, you know, the acknowledgement. So it's kind of like a, I can't call it a four-way handshake, but it's a four-step process when you're terminating that process. Now, If we're trying to analyze, uh, I don't even think I gave you any uh, packet. I give you one packet tracer lab, but I don't think there's any um, Wireshark analysis here. But this three-way handshake analysis, it's the host maintains the state to track each data segment within the session and the status of it. And how does it do that? It uses that with this three-way handshake. And remember, it establishes the session, verifies the, the device active, you know, the device is an active service and it's accepting requests. Then it informs the destination uh, device that the client intends to establish a communication on a particular port. But then, and after the communication is done, it what it does it shuts everything down now there's one thing in here in this header field for tcp control bits now these six control bits are also known as flags and the flag bit is set either on or off and there are six flags you want to do it so i don't know how you're going to send back which message you're sending back Guess what? I see the SIN, I see the FYN, I see the acknowledgement. This, it's, how, it's what I sent this control bit to as far as whether I am, how, what my message is in this protocol. So if you're analyzing a Wireshark, you're going to look at what are my control bits. Now Wireshark does that and kind of tells you what it is, but if you're looking at the raw data, you're going to look at those six bits to make that determination. I would watch your video on that and go ahead and do the quiz. 
and then we'll look at reliability and flow control in a second. I'll do that in the next video.